as, as people may know, you know, there are a number of uh, actions they staged before uh, the, the one they became most famous for, but all those actions had created quite a, a stir. And indeed, I think the, the cathedral actually is probably the most impactful and significant piece of performance art in history of art. I mean, I can't think of a bigger one in terms of its public perception. Um, you know, I mean, Joseph public Boyce resonance. and public resonance. I mean, Joseph Boyce did a lot of great things, but I would imagine one in a hundred people would even know who he was. Uh, whereas now, I would have thought most of the world know who Pussy Riot were. And indeed, the fact that they're, they're not understood in the way that we feel and they feel they should be is the reason for making the film in many yeah. ways. And it's not a comment on its quality, but it's a comment on its, on its impact and its, and its, and its, and its place in, in performance art, I think. It's is made the whole concept of performance a better known idea. So I think that's very significant. As I say, the numbers of people who would know Eve Klein or Boyce or whatever are, are limited. So they've expanded, I think, consciousness about what art can be to a very significant Ultimately, extent. Ultimately, the story was very much misunderstood, both in the West and in Russia. And I think that in the West, the misunderstanding was that, first of all, that they're a punk group, that they're banned, who get in trouble for singing a song against Putin, which is just nonsense. You know, if they'd done it outside the church, nothing would have happened to him. And you, you, to them, and you know, you look at their other performances. You know, they sing, "Putin pissed himself," on the Red Square, and they get like a fifteen-dollar fine for it. And so, and in Russia, you know, they were misunderstood as just sort of vulgar hooligans who are, who are were against religion, and you know, a lot of their political message and other messages were were lost. And in reality, and what's so interesting about the story is that. Ultimately, they're performance artists. They see themselves as such. They see themselves as continuing a lineage of Russian avant-garde art. And for them, what's important is the reaction that they provoke. They have no real interest in music. They have no interest in performing or releasing things or doing anything like that. For them, that's just a cost. Being a punk band is a costume that they put on. And likewise, this is very important for the film, was not to make them out to be martyrs because ultimately they're they use vulgarity and kind of, they try to offend public taste in a very calculated way. So when you look at their performances, you look at their actions, there are all sorts of naughty words and sentiments and kind of vulgarity. And actually, but when you speak to them in person, they're very eloquent, they're very polite, they don't swear, they don't drink to excess. Uh, and it's not about what we regard them as, it's about what they see themselves at and how they describe themselves. And ultimately, most of them, most of the women in the group, you know, were art students. I mean, not, Nadia was a philosophy student, Masha was a journalist, but Katya and the rest of them were all art students. They're like media art students. And, you know, and during the trial, they compare themselves to Malevich, they compare themselves to Brigov. You know, they're very influenced by Moscow conceptualism and Moscow kind of performance art. And so that's how they see themselves. Right. And I think that what their legacy is for the world is precisely what I mentioned earlier, is it, it's creating an alternative form of visual iconography for political activism. Stuff that official power doesn't quite know, not to sound Foucauldian, but uh, actions that, that the people in power don't quite know how to react to and don't quite know how to handle because they're done on terms that are different. Well, for starters, they've reappropriated the word pussy, and, and, and to have that on the front page of the New York Post or um, primetime television is actually an astonishing achievement where, you know, and, and, and that is part of their feminist agenda, of course, and, and uh, so we could start with that. We could also start with the fact that, you know, they have actually provided um, an incredible sort of um, insight into into Russian society for the rest of the world. I mean, although, of course, you know, in some ways what they've done ha is misinterpreted, nevertheless, there's been this incredible focus on the sort of social uh, 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 struggle that is occurring in, in that part of the world. And I, I think we, you know, do sort of, uh, I think people do, are looking at Russia in very different ways now. And, uh, um, and, and, and the fact that, you know, they're not just a, a single-minded, monolithic, you know, a, a cult of personality, that, they, that there are strands and, and, and elements within that that will challenge and will rise up, and that's, I think, good to know. So, I, I, you know, I, I think it's not impossible that Masha will be president of Russia one day. I think that's also a possibility.